Uh, one of the things that I always look for uh, that identifies the car that, that we raced was these uh, trailing arms. You can see it's actually, a, it's actually a box tube, and those were designed and made by Trevor Harris. Trevor Harris is the guy that is the brains behind the, uh, um, shadow. the shadow car, which is considered one of the most advanced uh, cars in the world. And so consequently, I went to his shop, and he actually had a little shed that was actually out behind the house, and it was overgrown with blackberries. But inside, he had a drafting table, and he had his machine shop and stuff there. And I still remember, this guy was so sharp, he had a box that was probably about uh, 12 inches wide and about 16 inches high, and then he had s some arms coming out, and then he had a the shape of a tire and he could take that tire and move it and it would go up and down and most of the time see your, your, your tire wants to tilt and so but the goal is to keep the tire flat on the ground and he had that thing designed in such a way that it could go up and down and not go tilt at all. Yeah, Trevor Harris did that so that's one of the uh, identifying factors in the car. So this would be the only cheetah that had that? Yes. That's yeah. my understanding. Because you all did it up in Seattle. Right. Well, actually, Trevor Harris actually made them, yeah. Yeah. So. All right. And then, uh, so at the end of the 65 season, uh, that was the end of your involvement with Alan Green and the Cheetahs and all that? That's correct. Uh, in fact, at Laguna Seca, uh, Shelby came up to me and said, Alan, he said, I want you to come back to work for us. He says, we're going to go to Europe next year, and uh, he says, I, I want you to go with us uh, as a driver. I said, well, Carol, I'd really like to have the same deal that Davey McDonald had. And I said, you know, I'd like to work on my car and drive it. He said, well, that's really what I had in mind, Alan. He says, you know, but what he really had in mind is he could get a driver and a mechanic for the price. For the, the same mechanic. price, yeah. So, <laughs> anyhow, that was uh, very, very fortuitous, and, and so I was able to take uh, the Daytona Coupe for coming back from the Tour de France, and so I was able to take uh, my car, a chassis CSX 2300, which is very similar. In fact, that it's uh, very, almost identical to that car. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took it all the way down to the frame, built it back up, and we ended up driving it at Daytona Sebring. Uh, and then went to Europe uh, and uh, raced at Monza with my friend Bondrat and I. We won that race, raced at Le Mans, first trophy in England, and that was the year we ended up winning the world championship, so, which was the first and only American team to ever win a world championship. Right. So, but that was even more fortuitous because of the fact I was actually working on the GT40s, uh, chassis 103, 104, we had Ford Advanced Vehicles and Slough, which is just outside of London. Well, they were right next door to Lola Cars, and so I got to know the Lola people quite well because we were borrowing tools and bits and pieces. and. I noticed back in the corner there was this uh, car that had uh, a, I don't know, a bedspread or a sheet over it. And I, said, I asked Rob, I said, the managing director, I said, is that the Lola GT? He says, yeah. He says, do you mind if I look at it? And he said, no, go right ahead. So I went over and looked at it. Of course, I had fallen in love with that car too. It was, it was a star of the London Racing Car Show in January of 63. And so I, I just couldn't believe it. So I came back and I said, Rob, do you think Eric would consider selling that car? And uh, uh, he says, well, he says, if ever would, it be now. He says, uh, uh, I need the space. So they just come out with a T70, and they sold a whole bunch of them. He said, I got a bunch of orders here. And I said, we could use the money. He said, make me an offer. So I went back and counted up every penny I could get my hand on. <laughs> and it was $3,000. And he says, OK. He said, well, Eric's calling in tonight, because he was just getting into Indianapolis. And uh, he's going to call in tonight. So I didn't sleep all night. And, uh, Got there bright and early the next morning, and he says, well, Alan, he says, you bought yourself a car under one condition. And I said, well, what's that? And he says, well, Eric would really like to have you have it out of here by the time he gets back, because he really wanted it to make a street car out of it for himself. So I said, that's not a problem. So, <laughs> he could be gone. That was only 52 years ago. Yeah. So. That is really good. Well, I want to thank you for your time today and talking about your period with the Cheetah, because I know everybody thinks about you as a Ford guy and Shelby and all the others. So 
a little bit about you started out in, in what AC Aces or AC Bristol's AC Bristol. and then did a little Cobra and then came to this for the better part of a year and then went back to Shelby uh, I think is something people will find of interest and I also want to thank you for verifying that you feel just like Larry Webb feels that this is the original Alan Green Cheetah and thank you again for so courteously signing the tunnel on and uh, yeah, we don't have a Carol Shelby in the Cheetah World to sign it, but we do have a couple of grants to sign it, so <laughs> okay. thanks again. Well, thank you so much, and I just want to commend you for you know keeping the car and, and uh, uh, restoring it and just driving it and, and showing it off. I mean, that, that's so important for people. It's been a very interesting drive. Would that not be a good way to describe that's the Cheetah? Very a very interesting drive and a little throttle sensitive. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, thanks. Thank you.